about things uh, that we don't know about. Uh, I am here, as always, with two of my favorite human beings. Uh, one of them... Aww. Is, <laughs> the yeah. is <laughs> Let's pause and just go, Aww. <laughs> I like that. Uh, one of whom is Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet, uh, and the other of whom is Gary, who is Binary Gary on the internet. I'm not going to do silly intros today because uh, I'm not. And <laughs> last uh, time we did that, we didn't get around to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, usually the way this works is uh, Gary and I don't know what we're talking about today, uh, which is pretty much every day. Uh, we don't know what we're talking about. Uh, Allison brings a topic to us uh, that we are expected to discuss uh, as if we knew what that word meant. Uh, that is how we roll. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Except when we don't. <laughs> Feels like a Dr. Seuss book, doesn't it? It's the That's closest not... you'll ever get to living within a Dr. Seuss book. That is how we roll. It's the name of the Dr. Seuss book. Yeah. Is it okay with you if I sit today? Sure. That's fine with me. Yeah. Sit, stand. I don't think Do viewers stand? really happen. It's more audio. Well, it might not support my air column the same way. And... Your air column? I'm sorry, is that what you're calling your like vocal cords? Well, sure. <laughs> I when I when I was uh, singing when I was younger, there was um, of course when I was younger, when I was older, when I was singing. <laughs> um, this uh, teacher was really big on uh, supporting your air column, so that when you're making sounds, that it's not hunched over it's a straight pathway from your lungs to your cords yeah i was taught that in, in when i did uh musical drama theater. yeah yeah but, um, but it was not referred to as an air column well down here in the south we uh <laughs> you do things a little different <laughs> aren't very bright <laughs> but i like i don't know in our uh, like we like coming up with alternative terms for things. So instead of umbrella, we've been calling it a rain ceiling, things like that. So maybe air column is just kind of another example of that. Rain <laughs> um, ceiling I, is native to where now? Your specific- Our article? specific apar apartment, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Once you leave the apartment, that term doesn't fly as much. Um, or like the, have, cold, the cold oven is the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> that's great um, um i worked with a guy that uh when it rained we, we, where i worked we had like multiple buildings and uh so if you needed to go from one to the other it was raining it was like crap I need an umbrella so he would always just joke that his jeep was an umbrella so he'd just go hop in his jeep and then drive my umbrella across the road <laughs> like like i mean it was like it wasn't a far walk but he'd get in his jeep to do it so he had cover over his head he was he was uh is bald, so I guess that it was not comfortable to have rain on his. I don't know. I maybe he just didn't like rain. I'm not sure what the reason he was. <laughs> is being bald in the rain the same as having glasses in the rain, where you're just like, this is an annoyance? <laughs> no. <It's not. laughs> Do you get that thing? Maybe not. I don't know. Is this a thing some anywhere else where like it's crazy humid outside and you're in the air conditioner, you walk outside and your glasses completely fog over? Yeah. Okay. So that's like all summer long for me. Like walk outside, like oh good, I can't see anything. It's only like, on, the, on the most the most humid days here. Um, oh, that's all of them in Florida. Yeah, so yeah. it's more of a rarity. <laughs> oh no, this is like a permanent fixture in my life. I also I, I bet as a whole places aren't as air conditioned here as they are in Florida. The coldest place in the world is inside in Florida in the summer. It's like you come in from. You know, 90 degree, 100 percent humidity. You step inside, and you're like soaking wet T-shirt because the sweat doesn't evaporate. And then, and it's like 65 in there, and you like immediately are frozen. You just like catch, catch a chill. See, and that's why then you get like summer colds and like all this nonsense. You do. Lots of people carry like 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 lightweight fleece jackets with them so they can go indoors. 
Is that not the craziest thing you've heard? <laughs> so Why do you set your AC so? Shouldn't it be like lower seven? I, I always, I always have, well, a, I always have a hard time when I'm talking about AC. Like, is it higher when your the temperature is lower, or is it's it a good question. lower? It's a good question. When they're, you're the they're the same thing. It depends on who you're talking to, sadly. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it varies, and that's a conversation I hear constantly. The um. Uh, the thing is uh, that a lot of businesses set it really cold because when you have the doors opening and closing a lot, well, then the temperature starts to rise. So you like, you know, you want to get ahead of the game. And so like by 5 p.m., it's, it's like a reasonable 78 degrees inside or whatever. But, you know, that's still cold when you come in from 90 and soaking wet, you know? Yeah. Cold. I keep my house at 77 these days, and I, that feels cold when I come in from outside. Like, like whew, very cold. Wow. I might put a jacket on for this call. <laughs> I want to visit Florida, but I don't think I'm cut out to live in Florida. <laughs> it's it's a place. I mean, there's a lot <laughs> of stuff there. Oh, that's a, the, the Yelp review for Florida. It's a place. <laughs> yeah. So so before um, before our company retreat, um, Aaron and the kids went to um, stayed in Florida for a week, and I went. To, I flew to Florida with them. And I was there for like, I don't know, one or two days. And then I went from there to Sri Lanka. And they were there for the entire time that I was there. And then they came back a day before I came back from Sri Lanka. And I thought, oh, well, they're both hot and humid. So Florida will prepare me for Sri Lanka. It did not. <laughs> Sadly, no. Sri Lanka, like as, as hot and humid as Florida is, Sri Lanka is hotter and humider. So it didn't even work as like a baby stepping stone of like I mean, <laughs> uh, not really <laughs> there are, people from florida were in sri lanka and were like they're like yeah this is bad. Damn, this is legit that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome we have we have uh three yeah three people who live in florida um and yeah all of them were like yeah this is this is bad that's almost it's, comforting, though, because then you're like, okay, so I'm not out of sorts feeling right. like this. Yeah. This is legit hot and humid. <laughs> Florida is kind of baffling, too, from north to south. Like, I'm in the very north part of Florida, which is the southernmost part of Florida regionally, right? Like, like southernmost as in, yeah, like, like culture. More like the southern. south, yeah. And then you oh, end with Miami, and you're back up. You're in New York. Um, or, or, or Central America. It's like both at the same time. Um, I like this. Geography lessons are scary. I'm like, it's the southernmost of the northern part? <laughs> um, you know what we should do? We should probably get to the top before we get some. Nah, I think we should talk about geography some more. Ge yeah, this geography <laughs> lesson is fascinating to me because like, my yeah, geography yeah. isn't so great anymore. Driving to the south. <laughs> drive north you're gonna hit the south of <laughs> when you drive south then you then you suddenly become in cent you're suddenly in central america yeah you're gonna yeah, feel it. Yeah. that vibe yeah um okay this week's topic is flow and bundles what flow and <laughs> bundles <laughs> wait 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 okay. <laughs> i'm gonna have to double check my spelling if you want me to spell it uh, phloem. Phloem. So it's two words. Phloem bundles. Phloem being P H L O E M. And bundles. I feel like you can do that one on your own. Right. B A U N D L E S. Flam bundles. <laughs> uh. Right. Or it could be a, a flow and bundle. You don't necessarily have to have. Plural. It doesn't necessarily need to be plural. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That that because that helps everything. I just want to clench that for you because I know there could be some confusion. I um. I uh, feel like uh, a bundle is a collection of things, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> a but we've got the definition of bundle. We've you know what? 50%. I don't feel like you said that with enough confidence. <laughs> We've got 50% of the topic discovered. Excellent work. Is, you remember the uh, TV network Nickelodeon? Yes. Yeah. And you remember when they sold um, Slime and Gak? 
in grocery stores on the shelf with me to check out. Vaguely. They also sold phloem. So a phloem bundle was like the package that it came in before you merchandised it. You would cut open the phloem bundle and merchandise it so that people would buy them. It was <laughs> so, a phloem. So um, I, will, I will make a different reference. Yes, please do. Uh, not really convinced mine. Just... Do, do any of you remember the show Angel? Nope. Yes. Which was a spinoff of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ah. So, so in oh. Angel, Angel is the, the vampire who is the love interest in the, the, the most of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series uh, in one form or another. And then they had two shows that were also run by Joss Whedon uh, and his team of writers. Um, and Angel was Angel was a little bit darker and grittier and a little bit more adult, whereas Buffy was always more like I'm not I don't want to say adolescent, but it was a little bit more like focused on teen issues. And Angel was more like a, I mean, you know, it was more of an adult show and more of a crime procedural thing. Angel was a private investigator vampire person, uh, specifically specializing in weird demon and supernatural stuff. Demon murders. Yeah, demon murders. <laughs> So one of my favorite lines uh, from from Angel uh, comes. There's this. There's this. There's this pair of demons. They're they're a married couple. They're sort of like a middle aged elder, married couple of demons that live in the sewers somewhere. Aww. And and she's she's telling him. She's talking about that. Uh, she's accusing him of being afraid of of mucus or something like he has this this mucus phobia and or something with that effect and he says i'm not afraid of mucus i'm afraid of sputum <laughs> what so can you can you help me out and connect that to the topic today i'm, I'm not with you sputum <laughs> Let it sit for a minute. <laughs> this is <laughs> basically like the we're going through the Gak family tree, basically. Right. So so we've got we got we got Sputum over here, which is sort of like a singular uh, uh, expulsion of mucus <laughs> substance, and then we have phloem bundles, which is when you put the sputum together in a big collection. <laughs> And it becomes a a, a, a flow and bundle. This might be the episode I'm not hungry after. <laughs> I was just about. I was like, wow, this is um, not feeling particularly snacky or anything. I'm um, I'm a little bit. Um, uh, <laughs> Why do you always want to bundle really gross things? <laughs> well, I well, think well, you, you have a you have a you have a spew, you have a flow and sack. <laughs> And the phloem sack is what produces the phloem bundles. And then much like, much like when blood escapes your body, it changes, it's like a different color because it's in, when it's uh, oxidized and it's different. So mm. when, when the phloem uh, is emitted from your body, it becomes sputum. Gross. This, yeah, I'm, I'm not here with you. <laughs> But how is this any worse than Dyson Sphere, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have discovered two things. That there's a phloem sack. Oh. <laughs> that the sack produces no. a phloem bundle. And I think, obviously, the sack is, like, right here. For our listeners, it's, like, on your neck, sort of in this general, like, under your ear area. Yeah. Um, also, for our listeners, Gary and I both look like we're about to be ill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have had that other cup of coffee. <laughs> well, I'm definitely not eating a Boston cream donut after this. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Too much foam content? Yeah, I mean... How much flow is too much flow? <laughs> a bundle. A bundle. What um? What in the world? <laughs> well, yeah, right. <laughs> is it is it is it the protein stuff that foams up at the ocean? A 
I don't know that you would refer to that as a bundle. If you were a scientist, you might. Am I a scientist? I think I think I think I am by proxy via this podcast. I'm like, yeah, I'm a scientist. Just just run with it. That's what we do on this show. Yeah. Just like the back alley astronaut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Run with that title. Podcast scientist. <laughs> I um I think I just found out that I can switch workspaces on my computer by scrolling the middle mouse wheel and I didn't mean to. Like I scrolled the wheel and everything disappeared. I'm looking at two blank desktops. Hmm. Oh no. That would be, that would be alarming see. in any other circumstance. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, I can hear you. I can no longer see you. Oh. Well that's uh that's your loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish it worked for the audio. Oh. Just like Chris talking about flow, I'm like, I better scroll to something a little bit less disgusting. <laughs> and my <laughs> favorite human beings have reduced down <laughs> to one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, I told it's you a very, it has a very that quickly earned problem. and quickly uh, dismissed title. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't sit. This is a problem. I'm sitting and I lost that. <laughs> I don't know. What did I lose? Favorite likability. Favorite human status. <laughs> I, guess I sat down and it fell in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all it was. Ooh, this week's topic took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> what else uh, comes in bundles? Firewood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't recommend. I don't recommend burning phloem. No. It's a bit would too it, flammable. Would it boil? <laughs> what would it do? Uh, it, it's sort of like uh, it's sort of like napalm when <laughs> when when ignited. Yeah, that makes that, that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. Of course, it would be like napalm. <laughs> Just facial expression. <laughs> Can you spell it again? The first word. P h l o e m. F l o w u m. Flowum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so obviously it's related to phlegm no it's not because, because it's one letter <laughs> away it, is it one letter away isn't phlegm p-h-l-e-m i think it's uh, probably not there's a silent g in there right oh yeah, yeah there's a g a oh, maybe it's not silent when you make the sound <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, that we all had to like, try it out. <laughs> two letters away. Yeah, it couldn't. That's yeah. almost there. I feel like there should be a content warning or something on this episode. <laughs> People know what they're getting into. I'm like, oh, if you're cooking dinner, just stop listening. Well, yeah. and and, and uh, our our favorite listener, Danette, did say that sometimes she she listened to this while making dinner. So sorry, Danette. Yeah, please. <laughs> we can't give you a warning preemptively, so we'll give you a warning, you know, halfway through. So after, after the fact. Yeah, the previous content might have been disgusting if you were cooking dinner. <laughs> I want to make sure we actually said the warning and not just intimated that we were, we were going might to. Might actually be disgusting. Yes. yes, yes. It was actually disgusting. <laughs> Legitimately <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. It was gross. Oh, man. Ugh, I should have stood up. I'm just not. You're just not. <laughs> You're not having it, as the millennials would say. As the millennials would say. I'm an elder millennial, so I feel like I can. Are you, though? What's, what's the range of millennials? I don't know. People keep giving me different answers. I think I'm in the category. I think the technical definition uh, if you're uh, in media, is anyone 1980 or something? After 80, is millennial? Oh, really? Well, I'm definitely in the category. <laughs> or is it? Or is it? I thought that was Gen Y. Like I thought Gen Y finished sometime around the 80s. I thought Gen Y. So Gen Y wasn't Gen Y the bridge between millennials and Gen X? Yes. So that's like, yeah. So that's like 70, 76 to 82 or something to that effect. Okay. Elder millennial. What's the defining difference between X and um, millennial? Uh, millennials 
millennials were born in the age of computers. They, they have never lived without computing technology. And we remember Fraggle Rock a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like they've always been exposed to, to technology. They've always been, they've almost always been exposed, or at least they've been exposed in their uh, formative years to like cell phones. Um, they're therefore they're more quickly, they're more easy. It's easier for them to adapt to changes in technology and, and, and changing in and software and like apps, the app culture. Do you, sort of yeah. Do you think that you, this is addressed to both of you, do you think that you are adaptable to software changes? I am. Changes? I feel yeah. like I am. I feel like I, although I will say that like lately I have felt like not elder millennial, but sort of like elder, I don't know, something. Um, <laughs> because as opposed to, you know, 10 years ago when I was like all about new social networks, new, new apps, new things all the time. Now it's like, I ain't got time for Twitter. I ain't got time for Facebook. Screw you all. Like, I'm just going to go in a hole and, and quietly talk to myself and not broadcast that to the world. Yeah. Mostly. I, so it's like you, you welcome change in certain aspects, but you're more like you evaluate what, where you're spending and focusing your time. Yeah, although it makes me feel like a curmudgeon because like there's new things that come out that all the kids are doing like TikTok and <laughs> I don't even know what else like, but there's like new things that are happening all the time. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It does make me feel like a bit of a curmudgeon because people are like, you on Snapchat? I'm like, no, I'm like, I don't really have any no. desire to be. I have like, it's like I have six units of, of energy and I can spend them in certain ways. And when I'm out, I'm out. So I don't have, I'd have to get rid of something else. I have six agree. fucks to give. <laughs> yes. All of my fucks have been given. I have no more fucks. Yeah. Have you so, seen that? Did you share that video of the guy playing banjo and singing that song? No. <laughs> oh. Sounds like all the yeah. things I like in one, in one video. Yes. We, I need to find that. It's, I was thinking I would learn it before the next uh, team trip to the company I work for and sing it with open mic night. It's, it's amazing. I will find that. You know who shared it with me? Um, it was uh, a friend of mine in the UK. We, we message pretty frequently about politics. Um, and in the context of one of our conversations, he said, watch this video. This, this is <laughs> relevant. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Why am I dragging so much? I've had coffee. I it, it's you have too much phloem. You have you have got your your phloem is bundled. I need to go see a, a phloem specialist to get some removed. You need some. You need a oh, phloem extraction. <laughs> Phloemologist. It actually sounds like a legit thing. So obviously it's science. It's yeah. it's medical. We've discovered it. It's medical. It has to be because a phloemologist sounds yeah. too legit. <laughs> yeah. What, what, uh, what would it be? I have been discovering all sorts of new types of doctors lately that I didn't. Oh, I is, it, it. is it is it P L P H L O E or is it that weird connected O E? Oh no, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> it's O E, like separate, not the right. whatever. So that, what, like, what is like that, what is that like weird O E thing called? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. An that's an next week's stuff. <laughs> an edible E. An edible E. <laughs> Edible? Edible. <laughs> no, like like oh. Oedipus, I think. Not yes. Like... Okay, that makes sense. I thought you said edible and um <laughs> I also like that answer. To be yeah, honest. that's that's good too. But that, that would be on Sesame Street. <laughs> Today's yeah. letter is E, brought to you by Cookie Monster. <laughs> Cookie Monster. <laughs> 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 um I think we should probably get an answer. Uh, we're getting. Yeah, I can't really think of anything other than like body stuff now. Thank you. For <laughs> You're like no, and we I don't want to. We could talk about edible ease. I, I just want to know that this is not some kind of like mucusy fluid. Um. <laughs> uh, oh no! I'm going to be disappointed, Jerry. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's what that um was. <laughs> no, no, it's it's not a fluid. So phloem is the tissue type. More of a gel. Yeah, it's more, no. So phloem bundles are the strings on your bananas. Like, what? 
you know the little like oh no i know i just had no that's that's so basically phloem is like the plant's vascular system so it's the stuff that like that transports the proteins and everything yeah why the plant you learn that in biology that seems like useful information so phloem is the actual thing and then the bundles of it are those strings does it seem useful? I mean, would that have helped you in, in life if you're <laughs> other than a bananologist? Would it help me? Well, it doesn't matter anyway. They're going extinct. So Bananas yeah. are going extinct? Or calls bananas are going extinct? <laughs> Zoom calls. Are, yeah, uh, I'm fine with Zoom calls going extinct for the most part. <laughs> uh, yeah, bananas. Bananas are going extinct. There's a, uh, yeah, I know. There's a, a fungus, like, like just decimating banana farms and I don't like the sound of that. I know. I know. I'm but anyway, just, some people don't like I didn't the do it. bundles. Some fault. people do. Oh, as far as eating them. That that um yeah, the fact that, that you you define that as part of the vascular system of the banana just makes me think I now have no interest in ever eating a banana. <laughs> I know, I'm just like, did I just ruin bananas? I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I, we didn't really, we don't really eat. I them. almost touched on it because I talked about banana pudding for about three seconds. <laughs> so close. Well, when you first were like, I'm not interested in eating anything, and I was about to be like, especially not a banana. <laughs> 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 I might have a banana after this call now. And not be as disgusted. It's, it's, um, been, it's been salvaged from the, from the bundle of phloem. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been a lot of years since bananas existed. I don't know how many exactly, but... I mean, more than a handful. Um, do we have any good things to do with the skin at this point? The banana peel? You can oh. compost it. That's, that's it. I mean, I feel like that's a single thing we can do with it. And I feel like it's, that's the best we can come up with. Well, you can wear it as a hat. There's lots of things you can do with it. They're just not socially acceptable. Useful, <laughs> useful things, useful things. <laughs> like, like I, why can't we like, I don't know. Like shave them really thin and 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 then uh, bake them and salt them and sell them as chips. I I mean, how can we not make it like not taste like awful? Like, well, because the, the whole so thing is like it's a protective skin. I don't think you're supposed to be able to transform it into what is actually inside. <laughs> but well, but I mean, there's a lot of fruits we eat the skin on. I, I think I will extend this to all fruits. I think you can actually eat the skin of a banana. You can, but it sucks. I know. I mean, you could you could put as much crap on it as you want. Also, imagine someone like pulling a banana out of their bag and just taking a bite out of it like an apple. You you could. I saw someone do that on the subway once. Yeah, it's true. Even even monkeys take the take the skin off. Um, it shocked the hell out of me just because I was just like so. I was like a morning commute situation. So, I was kind of just like hanging out in the zone, and someone just took out a banana just full bite of the peel and everything and I was just like it felt like a Twilight Zone episode where I was just did like they continue yeah. eating it yeah no it was full they just ate the whole thing in, in the stem as well at the end yep that's hardcore wow. I know and I was just like sitting there big and I was almost like my commute and I was just like am I gonna have to get off like I wanted to see how long this would go and I was like am I gonna have to get off like wanted them to finish it before I got off the train. So I was just I'm like, gonna have to call in today. I'm sorry. Someone's eating a banana, skin and all. Yeah, I, I have to write I'm gonna train. be late. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. There's, I don't have any other options. I have to follow the street through. This isn't listed under any of the sick day protocol, but I feel like everyone will understand. I'll try to take photos. <laughs> yeah. This is a personal reason day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I need to know. I'm taking a personal day because someone's eating an entire banana. <laughs> How long did it take? Because I, I feel like, I mean, I feel like that would be a, my jaw hurts thinking about it. Well, it's like extra chewy. I was definitely on the train oh. for like eight to 10 stops. So it was like a long commute, but. Yeah. Wow. It was clear that they had done this before. It wasn't. Well, oh, no, no. I'm, I'm going to just try to eat a banana. Public, like, first, yeah. yeah. You know, just in public without trying it at home first. <laughs> trying it at home so at this point of the show, we often will take listeners. No, we're not done with this yet, though. We're not done with this yet. I want to think through some things here. Um, I, some things. Like, was this like someone was brought up? There's two possibilities. They were, they were brought up. Um, and like, this is how they ate bananas growing up. Or they had never eaten a banana and went out and bought bananas. And like, I don't understand what the whole like fuss is. These things taste terrible, but I guess they're high in potassium, so I'll keep eating them. And they didn't know 
So at some point in their life, someone was like, why don't you peel your bananas? And they were like, peel them. Like that, that situation could have happened to a person. Okay. But, they, but they've never seen someone else eat a banana? I feel like the whole portability of a banana is that you have like. It's got its own wrap. I know. Its own wrapper. Like that's the joy of it, not having to eat. Oh, and the man, like, you don't, like, nobody cleans the outside of a banana? Like, think about that. Well, maybe they did. If they eat them a lot, maybe they do. And, and so then imagine that situation. If you left for work, they sat there at their sink and scrubbed the outside of this banana before tossing it in their bag. What? I, there is so much happening here that I just can't. <laughs> maybe I was on a candid camera show and I had no idea. <laughs> and they didn't use that footage because you were like, your reaction wasn't shocked. Your reaction was like, well, no, in true, in true, like, big city fashion, nobody yeah. acknowledged that this was happening on the train. We were all just sitting there being like, totally normal. <laughs> what you need is... all the time. Right, right. I yeah. had my headphones on. I was just like, no, I'm just listening to podcasts. This is totally normal. Yeah. Inside, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> also, because he was like, I don't know, wearing a suit, going to, like, what I imagined to be, like, a very legitimate job. <laughs> I can't, that, that didn't even fit it at all either. I was assuming, assuming a guy like cut off jeans and like a, <laughs> like a Leonard Skinner shirt or something. <laughs> I'm sure that somebody wearing a Leonard Skinner shirt and cut off jeans wouldn't be eating a banana, period. Maybe it was, <laughs> maybe it was more of a like, I'll you try to get this to like catch on as a trend. You should meet some of the, uh, the uh, vegan community here in Jacksonville, Chris. I probably should. I probably yeah. should before making gross stereotypes. <laughs> I mean, a Leonard Skinner shirt, cut off jeans would be like pretty on brand. Pretty on brand. I know what I'm getting everybody for the holidays. This Leonard <laughs> Get ready, well, everybody. Leonard Skinner's local. It's a local band to hear. I know who Leonard Skinner is. I don't know. It's, it's but can you spell it? Because I never can. <laughs> yeah, L Y N N Y R D S K Y N N Y R D. Oh, so there's two N's. I yeah, I would have so. And a bunch more wise than I expected. <laughs> uh, and it's it. The name of the band comes after they all went to I think high school together, and they had a teacher named Leonard Skinner. And so when they yeah. formed the band, they said, "Hey, Jim I team. got a great idea for a band name. Let's name our band Leonard Skinner." Yeah. <laughs> like twenty miles from where I sit. That's so sit. interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, so I'm excited about one of these questions, one of these Allison questions. Usually we take uh, listeners' questions if we have them. Uh, if we don't, you should uh, email us why you listen to this podcast because well, we're eating an unwrapped banana. interested in knowing. Um, but uh, if you don't have a question, or if you do have a question, but we don't have questions. But if you did, we would, an we would answer them. Would answer but them. right now we have Allison questions, and I am really excited about one of these because I actually know the answer to it. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to ask it, and I'm going to let Gary answer what he thinks uh, the answer is, and then I will see how close I am. I don't think I don't think this is actually a quiz thing. I think this is actually like just an actual legitimate question. So I might just answer it. Um, so the question is, uh, what is the difference between EG and IE? Uh, I think EG would be like a I don't know. So I think EG <laughs> would be like a physical example, and IE would be like. Oh no, EG is ergo, right? Yeah, which means like as a result of. EG is like the old fashioned way of saying so, dot, dot, dot. And IE is like, here's an example. Yeah. Is that yeah, right? IE I, I, I is when you have a very a specific example of the thing, which is, which is why um, most people use IE incorrectly, because most people use IE meaning like something like this, which is not what IE means. IE means no, specifically that thing. So oh. uh, an EG is like when you use EG, what? it's when you want to say something like this. Okay. Because it's, it's like in this general family is EG and then no, a specific example of that thing is IE. In my verbose writing, I would start in the middle of the sentence open parentheses. And an example might be dot, 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 close parentheses, and then finish the sentence. So it ended up taking like seven or eight lines to get the stupid thought out. When I, when I learned the difference, I lost between, you. when I learned the difference between EG and IE, uh, I immediately switched to using EG for everything because I always used IE and I always mm -hmm. used it correctly. So like, yeah. that's why I know the difference is because I always used EG. 
Same. <laughs> I um, I have a really bad habit of using ellipsis. 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 For someone who uses them a lot, you're sure not. You're having a hard time saying it. Well, there were there were a few popped into my mouth while I was saying it. I guess <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't spit it out. Yeah, I I use an awful lot of them. Awful lot of them. I'm not sure. I it's just like there's a bridge between thoughts. Like I didn't finish that sentence, and I'm not going to. But. <laughs> Uh, so use them verbally as well as written. Oh yeah, yeah. You just can't see them. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I use ellipses uh, frequently. I also use I also overuse m dashes. Um, oh man, I had to write a uh, I had to write a thing about really technical explanation for why a user experience was going to suffer for a thing we were changing, like how it's going to be a confusing user experience. And it was like about a thousand words I wrote. Hmm. And I sent it over to a strategist and said, hey, can you read through this and um, like fix it? Uh, so that we, it's actually like, you know, something we feel could send to a client. And uh, he's like, the content is great, but um, I have like 80, <laughs> 80 things, 80 notes as far as your grammar goes. <laughs> okay. Great content, um, some problematic grammar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, good. Like. Maybe our devs shouldn't look stupid in front of <laughs> Good strategy. It's also good to know there's always room for improvement in some areas. Uh, I mean, I knew there was room for improvement in my grammar <laughs> already. You're like, that's not a surprise. Yeah, I was not shocked to find this out. <laughs> also, one of the notes was like, maybe you could use a more common word here. <laughs> oh, OK. More All common right. than phloem bundle. <laughs> I know. There you go. <laughs> you have to stop using these five dollar words. <laughs> I used I used the word assuage yesterday uh, nice. in a sentence, and um, my project manager like, "Ooh." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I guess I haven't used that word in a year or two. <laughs> that's like that's one very often, often. Yeah. but there's not very often yeah. when we need to assuage things." <laughs> That's a fair point. You can flex yeah. those vocabulary muscles a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, I really need a word of the day. There used to be a screensaver for that. I wonder if I have a screensaver for that now. Hmm. It could just be called being friends with me. I can give you a word for that. <laughs> screensavers are still a thing? I haven't seen one in a while. I just, my, my, I, I like the after dark with the flying toasters and like. Yeah. I actually shut my computer down at the end of the day. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.